Tartonic vowel voicing. In this video, we're going to be going over yet another phonological problem. In this case, we're looking at voiced and unvoiced vowels in totonic. Now, in the phonetics videos, I talked about how vowels are always voiced. Well, in fact, we find that sometimes they get devoiced. Essentially, what happens is they get pronounced kind of like a whisper. So and I'll, I'll try to do this. I'm not guaranteeing that I'm going to get this quite right. But it's gonna, the first one would be pronounced something like tsops. So that last one is almost a whispered oh. OK, so as always, the first step is just simply identifying our environments. So what we do is just simply look for vowels. And since we're looking at all of the vowels in this case to see when they're voiced, when they're unvoiced, then we'll just simply identify all of them. I won't go through and, and underline all of them, but you get the picture. And then it's a, a very formulaic process. We just simply list the immediate environment for each vowel, whether it's voiced or voiceless. And in this case, we can just categorize them. We're not so interested in what's happening with ah versus e so much as what's happening with ah versus ah or e versus e. So in this case, we can just list the environments for voiced vowels and list the environments for voiceless vowels. And what we see is, again, just giving the immediate environment, what comes immediately before and what, immediate, what comes immediately after. So for number one, we've got a t at the beginning and a p at the end of that voiced ah. And that line, as always, represents our target. On the other side, if we look at that first one again, we see that the voiceless ah oh, comes right after a s and right before the end of the word. So that pound symbol represents a word boundary. So it's after s before the end of the word. Okay, now I would bet that you've already observed something. You've already observed that the voiced vowels always come between two consonants, at least in our set of data, and the voiceless vowels always come at the end of a word. So that is complementary distribution, which means that we should be able to come up with a rule describing what's happening. So the rules for totanic vowels are that we start with a vowel, and vowels are by default voiced. So we're always going to assume that they begin voiced and they become voiceless. So a vowel, and we'll use just capital V to mean vowel, any vowel, becomes voiceless at the end of a word. So again, this slash means in the environment of, this is our target, and this is our environment, which is the end of a word. And then it remains voiced elsewhere. And that elsewhere condition is important. That's the default. So we still need to include that so that we know what to do with vowels that don't end words. But it's a rather straightforward one. They just remain voiced everywhere else. We don't have to give any particular environment because it's every environment other than the one listed above. If you would rather put this in words, that's fine, if that's easier for you. Personally, I like symbols. I find it easier, and it's both easier to write and easier for me to interpret. But if you prefer actually writing it out as words, you would write something like, a vowel becomes voiceless at the end of a word. A vowel is voiced elsewhere. And that's it. So what we've accounted for is the fact that voiced and voiceless vowels for each one, the ah and the ah, or the e and the e, that those are allophones of the same phonemes, and the difference is just the 
plates. So it's complementary distribution. And when we find complementary distribution, we write a rule to account for that distribution. Thank <laughs> you.